All right, so we got the machine plugged in on the side there. Let's go ahead and power it on. Okay, so boots up almost immediately. Fans came on. Light here, and looks like we do have a startup wizard. So hopefully you guys can see the screen because it can tilt. So it's asking for language. English is selected. We'll click next. Area, so you're gonna choose global unless you're in China. Now we're going to enter our Wi-Fi network. So you're gonna choose your network and then log into it. And you will need this for remote access for the app and just connecting to the printer. But if you wanna do it manual, you can skip. I'm gonna go ahead and log in. It's connecting and it's confirmed. So we are good there. Let's go to the next step. So here you can scan our barcode to download the Anacubic app where you can control the printer from. And I'm probably gonna do that a bit later. So let's skip it. And I guess that's it. Here it says, enjoy your 3D printing. So we do have more steps. It wants us to insert the USB thumb drive that came with the printer. So we're gonna open up this little door and I guess we can plug it anywhere. All right, so looks like it's doing something. There we go. So that looks like it's a code for doing the checks, which is interesting that they <laughs> put it on a thumb drive. So all the axes passed, now it's going down. So it's got the X and Y check mark, now it's checking the Z axis. All right, and now it's gonna do auto leveling. So everything looks quite automated here. Preheating to 170. All right, so it's using the little brush in the back to wipe the nozzle, cooling the nozzle back down. All right, now it looks like it's probing the bed and it's actually touching it with the nozzle. So it looks like it's using a strain relief type of sensor inside to sense the pressure. All right, so the leveling's done. Now we're gonna start the resonance compensation. Confirm. And there it goes, you can see it kind of shaking around. So it's gonna do the X and then it's gonna do the Y, which is the bed. And maybe you guys can hear it, it's starting to vibrate. All right, now we've got the Y going. All right, so we're done with the resonance. So let's click on finish. And it looks like we got the main menu here and we're in the settings, which is interesting. Let's see, what is this? Okay, so this is the print. That's the material section. And then we got the tool section and we can preheat here. So let's click on PLA. We can see our temperatures have set 210 and 60. So the bed's already at 60 and the nozzle's going up. Let's see, do we have a file in here? Okay, so we do have something here. It's on the disc. Okay, so if we go to local, we can see there's a test model. So let's take a closer look here at the screen. So we have our temperatures on the top for the bed and nozzle. Some more icons there. And a cubic logo. We've got a big print button here as we're selected on print. And we have a few selections on the bottom. So this is going to naturally read the SD card. You also have local, cloud, and history. Here we have filaments. So here you can extrude, retract. You can choose the type of filament here. And then we got more stuff for the multicolor Ace Pro. So the next one over is tools and here we can preheat we have hot buttons for abs and pla also we have a cool down button we have axes move you can home the printer from here or move individual axes and also here we have auto leveling resonance calibration and pad calibration and then at the end here we have settings print option so you can turn off the sounds if you want you can turn off the film and detector the light looks like here we have more detections of belt and ai which is quite interesting fan controls the screen off lets you control when the screen goes into sleep mode. So I'll probably choose never since I'm filming. Here we can connect to the cloud. We also have lane only mode, which is grayed out. Support, and if we go down, guide, language. And by the way, there's only two languages. About the machine. And actually here it says firmware update. So I guess there's an update. Let's go ahead and update it. But yeah, that was pretty much all of the settings there. All right, so it's restarting. All right, and we're back on our main menu. And the screen is very responsive and very good brightness, and I love this tilt function. So I'm gonna use my own spool of this gray. It is hyper gray, so it's for fast printing. 
And if we move this to the side, you guys can see that the spool goes behind and then the filament kind of rolls out from the bottom up to the little bracket here where it goes through the tube. And we do have to push it all the way down into the extruder. And maybe you guys can see it right there going through. So I'm just butting against whatever's in there and hopefully it'll grab it. So let's click on the test. Okay, so there are actually more folders inside that folder. So we got a benchy here, a shark of some sort. So I guess we'll go with the benchy. There's a 39 minute benchy and a hyper speed 12 minute benchy looks like. So maybe let's start with the slower one and then we'll compare the really fast one to this 40 minute benchy or 39 minutes. So we'll click on print and there it goes. We'll grab this little booger. And actually we probably should have purged the filament. I didn't think about that, but let's see what happens. Maybe it'll kind of purge it itself here. Okay, so it's cleaning itself off, cooling back down. I guess it's gonna do the probing again. It's really wanna check really good the center. So it doesn't heat up as fast as you'd expect. It's a reasonable amount, but not that quick. <laughs> okay, I can feel that it grabbed the filament, but I'm not sure if it's enough by the time it gets down through. It's purging right now. So I made a mistake of not starting it or purging it in the beginning, but it does. Okay, it's flowing pretty quick there, so. All right, so it's, I guess, not so bad. We did have a little purge. And away it goes. So this is going to be the 40 minute Benchy. And you guys probably can't see very well because of that little light. Let's see, can I turn that off? Oh, okay, we can. Probably can't see anyways, but zoom you guys in. But yeah, you guys can see it actually started perfectly and the offset appears to be just right. Now when you do turn on the LED, the Anacubic logo up here glows too, which is really awesome. And by the way, the printer is very quiet, mostly fan noise. Barely any motor noise of any kind. So while it's printing, this is what we see. We got the bed temperature, the nozzle temperature, USB, I guess, plugged in and something else there. The G-code file name. Then we got a little preview of what we're printing. A progress bar, the percentage is done. And it's quite fractional. The time passed, just three minutes and 50 seconds. Again, our bed and nozzle temperatures. We got our speeds here, it's on standard. The fans at 99%. Here we have filament or material, which is grayed out as we're not connected to our Ace Pro. And then we have settings which we'll click in a second and on the very bottom we got a big pause and stop button so let's click on settings and this is where we can control the LED and also you can control the Z axis offset so right now it's set to 0.07 and you can adjust that up or down so if you need to go up a little you can change it here or down same and then you'll just save it so I'm gonna cancel since we are pretty much perfect but yeah pretty straightforward and very nice screen so yeah this thing is boogieing along and everything looks good And the screen does dim down or completely turn off when you're printing after a bit. So it took exactly 40 minutes and 45 seconds. Still hot, let's see. Yeah, it's holding on really good. That's a good sign. So we can pull this off. Cool it on the table just for a few seconds. And it should pop right off. Look at that, very cool. All right, so let's do this 12 minute benchy. Wow, that was an incredible start. Oh man, it's going crazy. It's shaking the whole table. This is definitely its maximum speed. All right, so we got the two benchies, and the second one took 11 minutes and 26 seconds, which is insane. For a bed slinger type, that's very quick, and as we'll probably see, not too practical either, but. So let's check out the 40 minute benchy, and keep in mind guys, this is like gray, light gray, so you can see everything in here. So the bottom looks really good. Actually, I would say almost perfect. 
Might be a little close to the build plate. Seems to be a small elephant foot. Very slight though. We can see the walls are beautiful. Pretty much perfect, I would say. The hashtag 3D Benchy back there is practically unseen. So that's interesting. And yeah, everything else looks also really good. The walls here, the overhangs, very reasonable. It's a little more inconsistent here, but there's a lot of retractions. And we do have a bit of stringing, which can be adjusted in the slicer. And the chimney looks okay too. So I would say, you know, this is the better benchies, but I would say it's mid-grade benchy for today's standards. But keep in mind, this is 40 minutes, which is still very quick for a print like this. And then we got this guy, which is the 12 minute benchy. And you guys can see, even though it completed, it's very droopy and yeah, just all melted and yeah, it's impressive that it could do it in 12 minutes, but it's also not practical as it loses a lot of its shape. And we can really see how droopy and melty and not really all that great. It is optimized to print this fast, but it still didn't do too great of a job at these kind of speeds. So I definitely think that printing around 250 to 300 or maybe even 200 would probably be a better speed for this printer to get that good balance between quality and speed.